Alright, welcome to another video, and before we get started, I'd like to take a quick minute to thank all the Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members whose names you see scrolling across the screen right now. Uh, they make this financially possible, and without you, I probably wouldn't be here making videos, so thank you. Alright, so we've just taken off. I can show you on my small GPS window right here. You see we've just taken off and completed almost two circles, or about one and a quarter, pretty much. Uh, but anyway, we're testing a couple things. Um, you notice I'm recording on both the transmitter and uh, receiver right now with Waxnail. And the purpose of that is so that we can try out the uh, the uh, gyro flow image stabilization. And on the last flight, I had mentioned that I had some issues with uh, vibration making it into the video and jello and things like that but hopefully as you can see here it looks a lot smoother um there's no vibration there's still a little bit of flex you can see in the wings it is pretty gusty but like i said i did want to fly on a gusty day pretty much because it's either fly on a gusty day or not at all right now the way the weather's been but that also gives me an opportunity to see how well this image stabilization works while the camera's getting rocked around pretty bad like this or the airplane rather so what I'm going to do is switch back to fly-by-wire. Fly and we're just going to go and cruise around and uh, maybe do some lower altitude stuff out here. Probably not going to fly terribly long. So I'm not really concerned about flying most efficiently. I'd rather kind of throttle up a little bit and kind of cut through the wind a little better. At least that's the hope. Um... I'm surprised at how rough the air is, though. It's a lot smoother than this on the ground. I knew there was a wind blowing. It's showing about a 10-mile-an-hour north wind, which is pretty accurate according to the weather forecast. Um, but it's not this turbulent rough down here close to the ground. So hopefully if we go to over here and start doing some lower altitude stuff, it might kind of smooth out a bit. Maybe work for the better. So uh, if we haven't already, I'm not sure how I'm going to edit this, but if we haven't already, then we'll go ahead and switch over to the onboard recording that I've run through Gyroflow to see what it looks like. And hopefully it looks good. Based on what I'm seeing in the, uh, in the live feed, I do believe I have my vibration issues taken care of. Everything looks a lot smoother to me. Kind of getting some shots over here with the uh, wingtips in view, just to kind of have a little, little, little bit of reference. Hopefully the, the earth is all stable in the video, and you'll be able to see the airplane getting rocked around in the wind. Um, one thing I did want to do while I'm out here flying, especially planning on flying low, I wanted to get down low and see what the formers did to this field. I know they pulled rows up in the front section of this field, but I wanted to see what they did in the back section back here. Just out of curiosity I wasn't sure if they planted this or what but they've definitely run some kind of tool through here in the last couple of days or so so let's get down low and see if it'll kind of calm down a little bit down here still pretty rough but like I said normally I would be disappointed with that but that does give us a chance to test the image stabilization which is the whole point of this flight that was a big gust we caught right there um, and being a north wind, I kind of expected it to be rough out here. It's like I've explained before in the videos, right on the other side of this tree line that I'm looking into right now, you can actually kind of see it. There's a flood levee right on the other side of those trees that basically pushes any north wind up. It'll roll up over that, over the top of that levee and over those trees. And it just makes for really rough turbulent air back here. But usually... When that's going on, you can get down close to the trees. If you're lucky enough, you can kind of get down close to the trees. And yeah, you see it kind of smooths out quite a bit right down here. Not completely smooth, but it's a little better than it was out in the open field. But I guess we'll make a quick run right down the runway while we're here. And then we'll go back and burn off some more battery. Kind of curious what that vehicle is out there anyway. It's like a tractor. Maybe we'll better follow him back the other way once he makes his way down the road. So I want to 
get right over here. Yeah, you can see once you gain a little bit of altitude, it gets really rough out here. So yeah, just so we don't overshoot them and get too far ahead of them, I'm going to circle back around and go back the other way. Maybe get behind him. You can see he's running right along the roadway there. And obviously we're going a lot faster than he is, so... We're winning the race. And we have a shadow to chase on the way back out here. And we'll go do some more flying out here. And like I said, if there's no real plane here, obviously you see I'm just kind of bombing around looking for anything of interest. Um, more or less just wanted to get out here and record some footage and see what it looks like. Um... And we're kind of limited to the first 10 minutes or so of the footage to be able to play with in gyro flow because like I said there is an issue that results in the subsequent files after the first 10 minutes every 10 minutes it's going to start a new file and the first file is usually okay for the most part and then subsequent to that you'll start getting corrupt files or not really corrupt files they play fine but it's like the encoder kind of writes some corrupt data into the files and you get a lot of pixel pixelization and weird looking video. But um I say for the most part because up until I actually did another flight. Um I don't know, it's been probably four or five days ago. I had done another flight and I see another vehicle down there and we might actually be able to slow down and stay behind him with the wind, with the headwind. We'll throttle back a bit. No, we're still going to overshoot him. But um, what I was saying, I did another flight to kind of do the same thing. I wanted to try out some uh, stabilization with gyro flu. And that's when I discovered just how bad my issue was as far as motor vibration that was making it into the video. And after that flight, I, uh, I just kind of scrapped that all that footage. And I pulled a motor off of the AR Wing Pro. And I found that the motor mount was a little bit loose. I was I intended to just check the balance on the prop because, I, like I said, I haven't really looked that close at it. I just kind of balanced the prop and everything when I first built this plane, and uh, just haven't really given it any attention since then. I've just been flying it, but I wanted to check to make sure the prop was still balanced and hadn't chipped it or anything crazy like that. But what I found was the motor mount was actually loose. The plywood plate. It screws onto the back. It was kind of loose. So I went ahead and pulled the whole motor off. And I pulled that plate off. And I readdressed that. I tightened it up. I actually see something out there on the, the roadway there. It might be that tractor we were uh, following. But getting back on topic before I strayed too far. I, uh, I went ahead and tightened that plate up. But while I was doing that, I used some little rubber isolator mount. Some little M3, M3 static rubber. M3 studded threaded rubber mounts and I run a set of these on the Sky Hunter and they've served me well for a while and so I decided to go ahead and run a set on here as well I had another set left over from years ago actually I might go to uh, make a little pass down there he's cutting drainage ditches that's what all that dirt is flying into the sky there obviously we don't want to fly into that that's actually big heavy chunks of dirt that it's throwing in the air it's not just dust but we'll turn around and make a pass at it but yeah getting back to what i was saying i used those rubber isolator mounts on the motor and i rebalanced the prop while i was at it and that cleaned up pretty much all of the vibration in the airframe from the motor and i also tightened up my uh, pan servo mount because that's another recent change that i had just done while i was mounting the hd system Make a little run out here. But, uh... Yeah, so I, I kind of started up the pan servo mount a little bit. I had actually just kind of shoved it down in the foam, and it was a nice tight fit. But I found that it kind of loosened up after a couple of days of just sitting there before I even flew it. 
As I know the first time I flew it after I mounted all this, I was having some jello in the camera. But all of those changes seems to have gotten all the jello out. And um, so hopefully this video is going to be usable. And we're over 10 minutes now, so if the uh, onboard footage has been corrupt, then I'll probably be probably have been able to show you that by now. And I guess if it's already come up by now, I'll uh, I'll put a note on screen, or, or it'll be pretty obvious. But um, you'll be able to see that. And uh, and I guess we'll switch back over to some of the uh, live recording on the ground with the OSD and everything, because it is kind of interesting. Flying, and I would just kind of like to do the whole flight. Yeah, you can see he's actually cutting big chunks of dirt out there. Or they're they're cutting little drainage ditches, and it's throwing big chunks of dirt into the sky. So we probably don't want to uh, to hit any of those large chunks of dirt. That would be bad news for us. But that doesn't mean we can't fly low and watch anyway. Um, but yeah, so on that previous flight that the jello and vibration and everything kind of ruined the footage anyway, I noticed on that particular flight, it's the only time I've seen it corrupt any of the video within the first 10 minutes in the first file, but after about seven minutes or so, I think if I remember right, it was like seven minutes, 15 seconds or so into the first file is when I noticed the first bit of corrupted video. But other than that, it's always happened in the second file, so I'm not sure what it is. But anyway, Caddix does tell me that that's all sorted out on their end. They know what the issue is, and they kind of gave me an, a rough estimate of about one week time frame. And that's been probably, I don't know, three or four days ago if I had to guess. So maybe within a week from now, we'll have another firmware to try out that'll have that issue corrected. At least that's... Uh, what I'm hoping for at the moment. Make another little run out here. One day when the wind's not blowing all gusty like this, we're going to come fly through this shit with walks nail. But so far, like I said, I've made low passes with this airplane and the Eagle, both, and it seems pretty obvious that they are capable of going through there with no video issues. But I just haven't done it yet. And I don't want to do it on a gusty day like this either. I could run out through some of this dust. But yeah, you see this is the ditch he's cutting right now. You can kind of see it. It's basically a little wheel that spins the PTO shaft on the tractor, drives it, and they drag it back here. I mean, it's, it's a purpose-built tool that they're using, but it basically just spins and cuts that little around it drainage ditch and throws all the dirt out of the way. Just kind of spreads it out in the field. And you can tell how interesting things are out here. We're tractor working in the field is about the most interesting topic we have to talk about. Besides the airplane, obviously. Yeah, this gusty wind down low, it really does make it a challenge flying like this. But I guess another topic of this video could be what the uh, the new pro camera looks like in the daylight. If I haven't mentioned it already, because like I said, I did talk about some of this stuff in uh, the previous video that I ended up scrapping because the fitted footage was kind of pretty much ruined by all the, the vibration and the jello. But um I had pretty much talked about it for a bit during that video, but in my opinion, during the daylight like this, this camera does look better than the original. To me, it looks a little bit sharper. Um, now, I do want to point out I am running a fixed white balance right now, because during that other video, I did notice that running auto white balance, the white balance did tend to hunt quite a bit, and so I just kind of set it to... Uh, I think it's uh, 5,000 is what I set the value to. 
I just set it to what looked normal before I took off and it's just kind of fixed right now. Um, but if they can tweak that as far as that and the exposure steps that I mentioned in the low light video, if they can tweak the white balance and the exposure steps, then this camera would be pretty much perfect. But even just running the fixed uh, white balance is fine. I can deal with the little steps and exposure because I've only seen that once it got really dark anyway as it was kind of struggling to adjust to the residual light on the uh, sunset on the horizon. But to me, this camera looks sharper and I have lowered the sharpness on this one too like I did the other one. Um, initially, I had lowered the original camera down to a sharpness level of 2 and I bumped it back up to 3 and I'm running this one on 3 right now. But to me, it looks really good. Um, I even priced the camera. They, I think it sells for about 60 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. I was even thinking about buying the Pro Camera to uh, mount on the Eagle and run with the V1 transmitter. And I may still do that later, but I mean, I'm pretty happy with the old cameras anyway, with the originals, with the Nano. And I haven't used the Mini yet, but I've, I've looked through it on the ground. We're going to use the original Mini on the uh, the Swordfish bill once we do get that underway. And that is on my workbench, by the way. We're starting to uh, get things squared away with it, plan it out, and have the Fox Nail gear mount it. I had initially said I was probably going to build it with the uh, analog video that came with it. They sent me the RTH plus FPV kit. But I'm kind of leaning towards just diving straight into HD at this point. Um, I already know their analog system works well. It's the same one they sent me with the uh, Mobula little wing. And for the few flights I had on it, I was pretty impressed with it. It was not really noisy, no motor, motor noise or anything like that. It seemed to have pretty decent filtering. And... Uh, You know, I never really pushed for much range on that that one, but it was adequate for what I did anyway. But I may just jump straight into HD with the Swordfish, I'm not sure. I do have everything already printed up and mounted. I made a 3D printed mount that I'll be sharing for that as well. We're getting really knocked around here in the wind. I want to take a look back and make sure we don't have parts hanging off the airplane or something. It, it feels really rough. But no, I mean, you can see it's just gust of winds. You can actually see the wings flexing as we hit the gusts, the bumps. Um, so yeah, we've been flying for almost 20 minutes now. Well, 18 and a half minutes. So I guess we'll uh, kind of head back. I'm kind of wondering where that tractor went now. Once he got to the back of the field, maybe he headed out toward the front. I'm not sure. Go back straight up this edge. Although if he did, I don't see him. And I don't see him out this way either. Huh. Or is that him on the back corner? Yeah, he's at back, very back corner back here. He's actually starting another ditch going back the other way. I'm kind of curious what all this stabilized footage is going to look like, or this far into the video, we're probably going to have corrupt files and messed up video anyway, but we'll have some at the beginning of the video to play, play around with until they get that all squared away. And the firmware fix. So I guess we're just going to head back towards home and uh, go ahead and end this flight. We didn't burn very much battery or uh, spend a lot of time flying, but we did what we wanted to do. Saw what we wanted to see. And according to my OSD, the wind is blowing from this direction. So I guess we need to land from this end of the runway. We'll land east to west so that we'll have a little bit of nose wind. Or it'll kind of favor the nose anyway. Um... But yeah, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the new OSD font. You've probably already noticed it by now. Um, if you don't know, this is the newest font that Sneaky FPV made called Nexus. And I'll have a link to his page as well if you want to go download that. And of course, links to 
the uh, walk snail system and uh, whatever else I find relevant. Try to use affiliate links when I can. So uh, I'm getting cut power and glide. We're kind of overshooting a bit, but I wanted to come in fast with all this wind out here. Kind of skidded it in a little bit sideways, but that's just fine. Got some spider webs hanging off my antenna over there. Other than that, everything looks good. Video looks good. Everything's good. I'm gonna go ahead and disarm. Disarmed. So that we lower the power on the transmitter. And I'm gonna end the video. And like I said, as soon as I get a fix from Cadex for these files, we'll play around with uh, some more of this stuff. But right now, I'm just having fun flying. Um, see you all in the next one, I guess.